Good morning, everybody. So today is my birthday, and it's a very special day for someone else, too. It's not my birthday. No, but it's pretty special. We're gonna go make the appointment to get my learners for my class one. Got yeah. my medical stuff right here. Right, right here. Passed with flying colors. Yeah, yeah, I studied so hard, <laughs> so hard. <laughs> so she's gotta pass a written test now to get her learners, and then we make another appointment down the road for her to come do her pre-trip, her air brake, and her road test before she can get her full-on class one license. I'm nervous about the, the air brakes part. That's the hardest part, yeah. The air brakes and the pre-trip. The driving, well, for me, the driving was the easiest part. I'm pretty detail-oriented, so I think the pre-trip won't be as hard for me as the air brake part. Because yeah. I don't understand that stuff, but he's supposed to teach me, so get on him about that, people. I think I'm going to learn a few things myself. Brush up on a few things. It's terrible. Well, I've been driving for a while, so this will be good for me, too, because it'll be a refresher course for me. <laughs> Let's go make your appointment. Okay. You gotta get your learners. So you can drive a big truck. Woo! Truck or Brit? Truck or Brit, yep. Oh, this door doesn't want to stay open. Oh, jeez. So we're here at MPI. This is where we, uh, this is our Manitoba Public Insurance. This is where we do everything related to driver's licenses. The only place in Manitoba you can get insurance for vehicles or yep. get a license. They have the monopoly on this, so there is no arguing insurance prices. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really dumb system in my opinion, but I mean, others beg to differ. The government controls it all. Yay. Government. So we made an appointment for her to get the learners. When is it again? Friday at 1.45. Friday? Are you sure it's not Thursday? Friday. You made it Friday? Friday. For sure. I got a paper with the confirmation on it. Going for her learners. Only need my learners for two weeks and then I can go get my driver's test. Yeah, apparently. I'll keep it a little longer than that. <laughs> Things are very booked up because as of September 1st in Manitoba, you have to take your course. So things are really, really booking up solid lately. So I'm going to have to really get on that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, after September 1st, it means like you'll have to go through a official specific trucking school, which, which costs is, about $9,000. Which is ridiculous. You'll have to. I mean, I understand why it's they're doing it. Bad. It's good and bad but we just want to save that money. But now it's time to spend my birthday money and get some new work shoes. They're so comfy. These shoes that I have on right here, these, this is what they look like new. This is what they look like after a year. So they actually lasted pretty well on the bottom here too, if I can not fall over. Still got some tread. A whole year. And they'll still last through spring yet. I'm not even going to use these new ones till all the mud goes away. I'm excited. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. Spend my birthday money on work stuff. Because I'm cool. Check it out. Birthday ow, ow! haircut. You like that? Sure do. And a birthday hat. You're wrecking the birthday haircut. Okay, birthday haircut. <laughs> I'm conflicted. I don't know if I should show off my birthday haircut or my birthday hat. Birthday haircut. Birthday haircut, okay. It's only gonna be like that for so long. Yeah. Now she's gonna drop me off at the gym for a little while while she comes back and does some grocery shopping. She'll pick me up, we can go home and hopefully relax. But we got some work to do at home yet. It's not as relaxing of a birthday that I wanted as I wanted, but that's life. Always stuff to do. That is a bright yellow car. Why? Why would you? Is that cool? It has no license plate. Huh. There she is. See, this location is nice. That whole building is Snap Fitness. So many other locations around that I've seen are, are just like this tiny little cubicle. Drop you off, drop you off at the dumpster here. Oh, appropriate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Your birthday chauffeur. Birthday dinner. As requested by me. Mm -hmm. it's, my, it's one of my favorite meals of all time, so. And you just, make it the best. We just can't eat it all the time because we die of heart attacks at a very premature age. What's the official name for it? Uh, chilche or kilke? It depends which region you're from as a Mennonite. 
If you're straight from Paraguay, it is called Quilque. If you're from Mexico though, I believe, or no, pardon me, other way around. If you're from Paraguay, as far as I've been told, it's called Chilche. If you're from Mexico though, it's usually called Quilque. So I don't know. Chilche, Quilque. I'll let my mom and dad figure that out. Mom's from Mexico, dad's from Paraguay. So they can, they can duke it out and come up with a new name for it, I guess. Just meet somewhere in the middle. Egg noodles and schmopfot, or cream gravy as us mm -hmm. Canadians call it. Cream gravy? Cream gravy. I call it schmopfot. I didn't know what cream gravy was when I first started working at the diner. They kept calling it cream gravy. I'm like, what is this? And they're like, schmopfot. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I totally know that. It's deliciousness, that's what it's called. I thought everybody knew that. <laughs> not if you're not a Mennonite or married to one. Well, if you're not a Mennonite, you're missing out on a lot of good food. A lot of good heart attack food. And a few heart attacks. Yeah. yeah. None of the food is healthy, but it's all so good. Like I said in my vlog, uh, a Mennonite's version of vegetables is fried onions, corn, and coleslaw. That's it, usually. Sometimes the odd Mennonite will make peas or beans, but that's it. That's all. Those are vegetables. Right? Yeah, but... See? I'm, I'm just saying that there's there's no other <laughs> vegetable. And then that's the schmolfot in there. Oh, and what's that made out of? Cream, butter, flour, pepper, and meat drippings when you fry or boil it in water. So it's made out of fat. Yeah. Is what it's made of. And pepper. Of. And pepper. A little bit of pepper in there for flavor. Pepper, yeah. Oh. And it tastes so good. So good. Brit, Brit makes it the best. Thanks, babe. I make it just like my mom makes it, and she learned from my dad's grandmother, who was a Mexican Mennonite. Mexican. They all came from, uh, well, northwestern Germany. And then they went to Prussia for a while. Now Prussia doesn't exist anymore. So it was Russia. They went to Ukraine. We kept getting kicked out of every country we were in because we were weird. As far as I know though, Mennonites, I think, I think originated, um, well, they're Dutch. Where would that be? Northwestern Holland. Germany, right along the border with Dutch, uh, with, with the Holland, Netherlands right? and Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Because our last name, Giesbrecht, is, uh, could be considered a Dutch name, but uh, it's officially considered, if you ask Google, it's considered a German name. But our people, we originally came from Northwestern Germany and the Netherlands. It's The borders have all changed. Uh, they've all changed over the centuries, but. Same with my. That whole region name. there. My maiden name as well was originally, I think, Dutch, but it's considered German. It was Ham. Yeah. H A double M. So. We had a very unique uh, religious way of practicing religion. And at the time we kept getting pushed out of every country, going from country to country to country to country, trying to find a country that would allow us to protect, uh, practice our religion the way we wanted to and no one wanted to because there was no freedom like that back then. And so eventually we made our way to Canada where they promised us freedom of religion. And so far, so far they're still messing with us a little bit. They've gone back on a few promises since we got here, but they, they've, allowed us to have freedom of religion here and uh the u.s is the same thing big mennonite population in southwest kansas and a lot of them went to chihuahua mexico as well and a bunch went to near chaco paraguay i think that's the name of the city i don't know but too much talking time to eat dinner is served happy birthday <laughs>